Hello everyone. Today we are going to learn about crystal field theory. This is the topic which is in the chapter coordination compounds standard theory. Very interesting topic and it is very useful to understand the structure of any coordination compound. So let's begin. Crystal field theory is the theory in which there is uh, a belief that there is an ionic bond between metal and ligand. So, if uh, there is only metal alone, we know that in uh, metal all the five the orbitals are having same energy. Therefore, they are known as the generator orbitals. We know the name of these five the orbitals: the x y, the y z, the x z. The x square y square and the z square. These are the five d orbitals which are having same energy when an atom or an ion is alone, which is not surrounded by any ligands. Now, out of these five orbitals, two orbitals are situated on the axis, while three orbitals lies between the axis or between the plane of the axis. So, when atom or ion is alone, the energy of all five orbitals are same. They are known as B generated orbitals. So, this is a diagrammatic representation of five D orbitals which are having same energy without any restriction. Now, if any metal atom or ion is surrounded by a negatively charged cloud, in that case also. The energy of all the 5D orbitals remains same. Still, the energy of 5D orbitals are same. That means they are still uh, called as degenerate orbitals. But when any ligand comes to attach with metal or metal ion, in that case, the energy of these 5D orbitals will not remain same. There will be some splitting of energy, as you can see in this diagram. So. Why splitting happens? The reason is very simple. Two d orbitals which lies in, on the axis will have maximum repul repulsion uh, with the electrons of ligand. Therefore, the two d orbitals, the x square, y square, and z square, which are having maximum repulsion, their energy will increase. These Higher energy d orbitals are named as eg orbitals. So the x square, y square, and the z square are the orbitals which are situated on the axis and they are having maximum repulsion with the electrons of ligand. Therefore, their energy is increased. This is the base center, that means equatorial line, and the energy of these two d orbitals are increased by three by five. What is delta O that we are going to discuss later. Now, remaining three orbitals, which are the x1, the yz, and the xz, which are uh, between the plane of the axis. Therefore, they are having minimum repulsion with comparison to the e3 orbitals. Therefore, their energy will slightly decrease. So, these are given as T to G orbitals. So there is a splitting of energy in the presence of ligand. Therefore, this phenomena is known as crystal field splitting. And we are going to discuss about the octahedral complexes in which splitting is happening. Therefore, the symbol delta O is taken. It represents the crystal field splitting energy of octahedral complex, that means delta O. Now, the energy of these EG orbitals are increased with 3 by 5 delta O, that means 0 by 6 delta O is increased, while the energy of these T to G D orbitals are decreased by 2 by 5 delta O, that means they are decreased 0.4 delta O and this splitting is considered as delta O which means 
the crystal field splitting energy in octahedral complexes. Now, this is the basic concept. So, when ligand comes near the metal, then the energy of all the d orbitals uh, will not remain same, there will be a splitting. And if this happens, then suppose if there are four electrons in any d orbitals before splitting, then what will be the situation after splitting occurs? The value of this delta O depends upon how strong the ligand is. Stronger the ligand will make maximum value of delta O. That means if a ligand is stronger, then splitting will be maximum. So, from the value of this delta O, we can have a series of the strength of ligand. This series is named as spectrochemical series of ligands. And this is the series, we have to remember the sequence of the strength of these ligands. You can see that this is I minus 1, which is a weakest ligand. And if we go further, Br minus 1 is slightly stronger than I minus 1, then SCN minus, then CL minus, then S minus 2, and so on. If you move from left to right in this series, the strength of ligand gradually increases. As you can see, carbon monoxide, which is named as carbonyl as a ligand, is having maximum strength. And in our spectrochemical series, iodine is the weakest field ligand. So, this is the spectrochemical series which we have to remember. Now, let us come to the point. If there are four electrons in the orbitals, suppose we have four electrons in the orbitals initially. When any negatively charged cloud is uh, around the matter, in that case also, these are the four electrons. But when splitting happens, then how can we accommodate all these four electrons in the these orbitals which are splitted now. So, there must be uh, some basic rules. There are some basic rules. How Paul Pauli and Hohn's rule can be applied for the accommodation of electrons after the splitting. So, these three orbitals are having lower energy. Therefore, electrons according to half Paul law will first accommodate in the lower energy orbitals. That means, first three electrons can be filled in the 2 g Now, the fourth electron. For the fourth electron, there are two possibilities. That fourth electron can make a pair with this electron. That means, it will accommodate in T2G orbital. And there is another possibility that that fourth electron will accommodate in EG orbital. So it will not make any pair. So electron either make a pair or fail in EG orbital, which depends upon the amount of the value of delta O. If delta O is maximum, that means the value of delta O is greater than P. In that case, there is a vast energy difference between T to the energy. And the uh, simple phenomena, we know that if there is a big difference between energies of orbitals, then electrons will first accommodate in lower energy orbital and they will make pairs. So, fourth electron will accommodate in this orbital when delta O is maximum. That means if delta O is greater than P, in that case pairing will occur and electronic configuration of such complex can be written as T2G4, EG0. We have only four electrons, all four electrons are accommodated in T2G orbitals. That, that means 
it will be written like this p to the 4 pg doesn't have any electron in that case that means pg is having no electron so electronic configuration in case of delta o is greater than p then pairing will occur and electronic configuration will be p to g4 pg0 now second thing if the value of delta g is not so big therefore there is a less energy difference between p to g and eg in that case this fourth electron will accommodate in eg orbital so if delta o is less than p that means the crystal field splitting energy is less than the pairing energy in that case pairing will not occur and the fourth electron will go in eg in that case electronic configuration will become p to g3 and eg1 so these are the two uh, main possibilities for the fourth electron to the field which depends upon the value of delta O. Higher the value of delta O, more splitting will occur and in that case pairing can happen and if there is a small value of delta O, in that case pairing will not occur, uh, fourth electron will move in EG. So this is the basic concept of crystal field theory in 